Hello, this is Vasvi from At Home Tuition. Today's topic is probability. Here I have straight away taken few problems and let us discuss about it. So before we go on to the problem, let me remind you the probability of an event is given by the formula number of favorable outcomes over total possible outcomes. So we are going to apply this and do these problems. Now the first question says a bag contains lemon flavored candies only. Malini takes out one candy without looking into the bag. What is the probability that she takes out? The first question is an orange flavored candy and the second one is a lemon flavored candy. So let us look into the problem. They, they say that the bag contains only lemon flavored candies, right? So there is no chance of picking out a orange flavored candy from it, right? So the answer for the first one would be probability of getting an orange candy. That's an impossible event, right? Is zero. Got it? Now the second one, they ask you what is the probability of getting the lemon flavored candy. So since the bag contains only the lemon flavored candies, Whatever, whichever she is going to pick out is going to be a lemon flavored one, right? So that is a sure event. So for probability of getting a lemon candy, since it is a sure event, you can say it is one. This implies that it is a, it is an impossible event, okay? And one denotes that it is a sure event. Since it is a sure event, you are sure to get it. So you put 1 as your probability. Well, let's go on to the next one. Second problem has two subdivisions. In the first one it says, a lot of 20 bulbs contain 4 defective ones. Okay. So in 20 bulbs, you have 4 defective ones. One bulb is drawn at random from the lot. What is the probability that the bulb is defective? Right. So for the first one, probability of getting a defective bulb. This is very simple because it clearly states totally you have 20, right? The total bulbs are 20 out of which only 4 are defective. So it is going to be 4 over 20. You can simplify and say it is 1 over 5, okay? So this is the probability for the first one. And in the second one, they just say, suppose the bulb drawn in one is not defective. Okay. You have drawn one bulb and you find it good. It is not defective. And you haven't replaced it inside the bag again. Okay. And is not replaced. They say it is not replaced. You had 20 bulbs. One you picked out. So now left out is 19. Right. So out of 19, now you are going to draw one bulb. What is the probability that the bulb is not defective? So the total possible number of bulbs you have is 19. In this, the defective ones are 4. Since you, because you know very well the one you re, when you took out is not defective, right? So in this 19, you will have the, the 4 defective ones. So... From this 19 total, if you remove the 4 defective ones, the favorable ones are 50. Okay. So 15 over 19 is the answer. Hope you understood this. Now, let us go in for the third one. Here they say, suppose you drop a die at random on a rectangular region shown in figure like this. Okay. What is the probability that it will land inside the circle with diameter? 1 meter. So they have given you the diameter here as 1 meter. Okay. Favorable outcome will be within the circle. The area inside the circle. Right. And the total outcome is the full area of the rectangle. So let us find out the areas first. So area of rectangle we know the formula. It is length times width which is nothing but 3 times 2. So it is 6 meter squared, right? Okay. Now you need to find the area of circle. So area of circle is equal to the formula as per the formula. 
your radius has to be found out. So your radius is equal to 1 meter is the diameter. So divide that by 2. So it's half meters. Okay. So here the formula is pi r squared is the formula. So that would be pi times r here is 1 over 2, right? 1 over 2 the whole square, okay? So that gives you pi over 4 meter square. Finding the probability, probability of dropping the die inside the circle. The favorable outcome is the area of the circle, right? So that would be pi over 4 divided by the total outcome is 6, right? So that is nothing but pi over 4. This division I make it as multiplication and I write 1 over 6, right? So this will be pi over 24 is your answer. So the probability is pi over 24. Now let's move on to the next problem. Here they say a die is thrown twice. Okay. A single die is thrown twice. What is the probability that the first one is 5 will not come up either time. And the second option is 5 will come up at least once. Okay. Before going into the subdivisions. Let us, uh, let us make one thing clear. Throwing a single die two times, okay, twice and throwing two dice simultaneously are one and the same, okay. You can throw one die two times or is equal to throwing two dimes once, okay. So, uh, let us first find out the total outcomes, okay. We need to know the total outcomes. Since it is little complicated, let us write down the total outcomes. Total outcomes is equal to 6 because uh, a die has 6 phase. So 6 times 6 is 36. Okay. So the total outcome is 36. And favorable outcomes. Let me list out the favorable outcomes. So first let me do the second question first. Okay. That is the possibility of getting 5 at least once. So just see, you may have 5 first time when you uh, roll it and here you can have, second time you can have 1, okay. So that is one, one option. Then you can have 5, 2, got it? 5, 3, then 5, 4. All these cases you are getting 1, 5, okay. Then you have 5, 5, 5 on both, okay. And this is 5 and 6. Now, just keep the 5 for the second die. And uh, here it will be 1, 5. Okay. 2, 5. This is also possible, right? And then you can have 3 first time and 5 second time. Then it is 4, 5. And here you needn't write 5 comma 5 again because 5 comma 5 is equal to 5 comma 5. But here all these are not equal. 5 comma 1 is not equal to 1 comma 5. That's why I wrote it second time. Here since it is equal, I'm not writing that again. I'll just write 6 comma 5. Okay. So just count how many outcomes do you have. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So you have po all possible outcome is 11. Okay. So let me write the first qu second question first. Probability of getting uh, 5 at least once will be. You have 11 favorable outcomes out of 36. So that is 11 over 36. Okay. Now let me do the first question. They say probability of. That 5 doesn't turn up. Okay. You shouldn't get 5. So in all these cases you get 5. So not 5 means it should be 1 minus 11 over 36. Okay. You can write the 1 as 36 over 36 because the denominators. This is just mere fraction calculation. So I needn't repeat. Anyway I am just telling you this again. 
So this will give you 25 over 36. Okay. 25 over 36 is your answer. Not 5. You, what you do is at least once. The answer you got for 5 at least once. That you uh, subtract from 1. And the remaining will be not 5. Okay. Yeah. You have one more problem here. Here it says 5 cards. The 10 jack, queen, king and ace of diamonds were well shuffled with their face downwards. One card is then picked up at random. What is the probability that the card is queen? And second question is if the queen is drawn and put aside, what is the probability that the second card picked up is an ace? And the next one is a queen. Okay, let's do one by one. Okay, so total uh, cards you have is 5. Okay, that is clearly said. And then you're going to, the first question is like, what is the probability uh, that you pick up a queen, right? So in this, the favorable outcome for a queen is 1. So probability of picking up a queen is 1 over 5, right? Out of 5 cards, there is only 1 queen. So it is 1 over 5. Yeah, this is done. The second question has 2 subdivisions. They say the, the queen which you have picked up is kept aside. Okay, you put that aside. And then now you are going to pick up the second card. So out of the total 5 cards, already 1 card is gone. So your total is now 4 only. Okay. Now, uh, if you pick out an ace, what is the probability of getting an ace? Okay. So, since the total number of cards is reduced to 4, you put 4 in the denominator. Okay. And getting an ace is just one chance. So, that is 1 over 4. Okay. This is the answer for 2A. Now, I am going to do the 2B. Second time when you pick up, what is the probability of getting a queen you have already picked up a queen and you kept it aside so there is no more queen in the cards right in the four cards left out so this time getting a queen okay queen second time it's not possible you already have taken it out and you had only one queen there and that you have taken out so there is no possibility of getting a queen again so that's zero chance out of four or you can directly say it is an impossible even so the answer is zero okay so just think logically it is very simple there is no much calculation involved in probability all you need to know is the formula uh, probability of any event is number of favorable outcomes divided by total number of outcomes so let's do the sixth one a piggy bank contains 150 paise coins and 50 uh, 1 rupee coin and uh, you have uh, 20 2 rupee coins and 10 5 rupee coins. Okay. If it is equally likely that one of the coins will fall out when the bank is turned upside down, what is the probability that the coin, the first uh, question is, will be a 50 paise coin and the second one will not be, see this is will not be, 5 rupee coin. Okay. Let's do the first one. Before going on to this, we don't know like how many coins we have. Right. So let us first find out the total sample space. You call it sample space. Okay. Outcomes. I mean the outcomes. Sample space. Let us find out the sample space. You have 150 paise coins plus uh, 50 1 rupee coins plus 20 2 rupee coins. And finally, you have 10 5 rupee coins, right? So, totally you have 180 coins. So, now you got the total sample space. Let us do the first one. Probability of getting a 50 paise coin, right? So, how many 50 paise coins do you have? Favorable is 100. You have only 150 paise coin here. So, that's 100 over the total sample space which is 180, okay? So you can cut off the zeros and simplify it. So that would be 5 over 9. 
let's do the next one here they say probability of not rupees 5 coin for this you should know what is probability of 5 rupee coin okay rupees 5 coin is you have totally how many 5 rupee coin yeah you have 10 5 rupee coin here right so the probability of getting a 5 rupee coin is 10 over 180 okay so that is nothing but cancel the zeros you get 1 over 18 and now they ask you not 5 rupee coin so for that you can do 1 minus 1 over 18 okay so that would be 17 over 18 and that is your answer so probability is very simple all you need to know is learn the formula uh, probability of any event is equal to the number of favorable outcome divided by the total sample space right and you should know what is the total sample space for each problem because either they would give it clearly in the problem like here they've given you five cards sometimes they may not give so you have to find the total sample space and then also find out what is the favorable uh, outcome and with that you can calculate the probability this is just a logical thinking you don't have any much calculations here uh, all you need to do is just simplify the fraction which you get okay hope this video was useful to you thank you see you bye